we have our sign up form now and when user is filling this form we will have changes on our layout the button the sign up button is initially disabled and let's make sure this button is enabled after the user enters same values for password and password repeat inputs currently no matter what we type here the button is disabled now let's add a test about this one so far our tests were about the layout and we were checking the existence of the header button and the input fields but now we are going to interact with these fields and I prefer to group these tests in another describe block so let's add another describe right here and these tests are about interactions now we are going to add our tests to this describe block and our test is it enables the button when the password and password repeat fields have same value the description is a bit long and we will add our test function by the way I'm going to change the appearance I'm toggling the word wrap so here we are seeing all the lines now again we are going to render sign up page and we are going to get the let's copy that copy them from here we will get the password repeat let's name it to as password repeat input and also we will get the password input which is having the label of password so we are getting reference to these inputs now we are going to change their content and for that we are going to use the dependency we installed which is user event let's import that one first so we will import user event from from this testing library user event package and we are going to change the values of these inputs we will do that with user event and it has functions like click double click hover and the others but we are going to type to our element which is password input and we will type as the value let's say the password will be this one p for double s word but this action this type action is an asynchronous action so we must be waiting this type to be completed to do the next things in this test so we for that we are going to use async await functionality so let's mark our test function as async and here we are going to await at this line so we we are typing password to this password input and we will do the same thing for password repeat input so both of these inputs will have the same value so at this step let's get the button and let's make sure this button is not to be disabled or we can use to be enabled so we are expecting this button to be enabled saving this one now the test is failing because the button is disabled it is not enabled and we also confirmed that on the browser now let's fix this one first thing we need to do is we need to get the values of these inputs and compare them then based on the result we will set either the button is disabled or not first of all we must be able to dynamically set this disabled attribute so we are going to have a local state in this component and this local state 
will be changed based on the user actions and we are going to handle the state in the script block so this script part is belong to this component and the other components will not be able to access this one we can have functions we can have variables but the scope of those functions and the variables are limited to this component for instance we can have a variable like let disabled and let's say this is going to be true and when we compare the values for this password input or the password repeat input we will be updating this disabled to false or true based on the values so we are going to use this disabled in our component in our element right here so we can say this disabled is equal to the value of this disabled field we have in our script and if we save this one we see nothing is changed but if we go and update this disabled to false here we are seeing the button is enabled now because it's not disabled so basically we have this local state this is tracking the, the disabled status of the button and all we need to do is we will update this disabled based on the values in these fields the password and password repeat by the way Suelt is aiming to do more things by writing less code we will see the examples throughout this course and for this case just like the object create shorthand in JavaScript if the attribute name is equal to the variable name we are using here we can type it like this instead of this disabled equals to the disabled variable we have here we can just type it like this in curly braces the disabled saving this one and if we change the value here we are seeing that it's affecting how the button is shown on the page now the button will be initially disabled so the disabled will be true and we will be setting this disabled to false when the password and password repeat values are same so we need to listen the events triggered in these inputs whenever we type anything to these fields they are dispatching an event and that event is input event we are going to listen this input event triggered in this element and we will do it like this for this input we will be handling the input events so whenever an input event is triggered we do it like this on input now we are going to assign a function to this one and let's define our function right here let's say this is function on change password so we are going to call this function so this function will be called whenever this input is changed uh, by the way for consistency instead of this function I, I'm going to go with arrow function so the function is like this so the onChange password will be called whenever anything changes in this input and similarly we will have another function here and this is for onChange password repeat and this one will be called whenever a change occurs in this password repeat input and here let's assign on change password repeat to this password repeat input these functions will be called with the input event so let's get the event as a parameter and from this event we can get the value of that field so event has target target is this input element itself and 
this input will have the value so this is going to be having the password value so let's also store the, those values in the state so we will have let's say uh, the password and password repeat so we will be setting the password coming from this event and it's it is having the reference to this input and we will take this input value and same thing also applies to this password repeat case the password repeat value will be equal to event target value now we have password and password repeat values now we can compare both of them so if password equals triple equality so we are carrying type and the value so the password and password repeat if they are same then the disabled will be false since both of the values are same the button must be enabled so the disabled is false otherwise the password and password repeat are not matching so the disabled value will be true so we will be keeping the button as disabled and we will repeat the same thing in this onchange password repeat function now let's save this one now in test output here we can see the test is passing and if we test it on browser so typing anything right here and to this password repeat here we can see the button is enabled and if i type something else if they are not matching the button is disabled so this is fixing the issue now let's refactor our implementation here the test driven development has three cycle red green and refactor we have an implementation fixing the test so the red cycle is where the test is failing green is where the test is passing with an initial implementation and the refactor cycle is enhancing the implementation we are repeating ourselves in both of these functions so what we can do is basically we can create another function let's say the function is refresh disabled and we will do that control in this function and all we will do in this on change password repeat and the on change password functions we will just call the refresh disabled and let's do the same thing here too saving it the tests are still passing uh, we can also enhance this part a bit more we are just setting a boolean value based on this equality so instead of having this if else this disabled will be the result of password not equal to password repeat so if the password does not match the password repeat this expression will return a result of true so the disabled will be true otherwise this expression will return false so when password and password repeat are same this is going to be resulting false which means disabled will be false saving this one so this is also working we can do this implementation with a shorter way svelte has a functionality called as reactive declarations we are running this refresh disabled from our on change functions here we are updating the password and password repeat and after each change the disabled must be recalculated instead of defining as a function like this one and calling it from our functions we can have a reactive declaration so the reactive declaration is something like this the dollar sign and colon now we are going to set disabled and basically we are going to set disabled to this value
now we don't need this function and since this function does not exist we are not going to call it from our on change functions so what this declaration means is whenever this value whenever this one this password or password repeat changes this line will execute it and based on the based on this result this field this disabled property will be updated so let's save this now we have a failing test and if we check that test that is the one from our layout test where the button is initially disabled and here we are also seeing the same behavior on the browser but if we type something here here we can see the sign up button is disabled and if we type the same thing to password repeat now the button is enabled basically this part is working but this part is also working when the component is initially added to the screen this expression is run when the component is added to the screen this is resulting equality which means this disabled will be false which means the button will be enabled password equality for empty case is not making any sense so let's make sure this compare logic is excluding the empty cases so we can do it like this so we will have an expression here first so if there is a password if this is if there is a value for this one it's going to be true and if we have password repeat again both of these if both of them having a value this will be resulting true and then we can have a turner operator here so if we have a value for password and password repeat then let's compare their value if they are equal this is going to be resulting false and if they are not equal this is going to be resulting true so the disabled will be updated based on that and since this is a turner operator this is this part is the true case so when we have the values this is going to be executed otherwise if we don't have any value then the button must be disabled the, the disabled must be having the value of true so let's save this one and here we are seeing the button is disabled but let's wait for the test result and the tests are passing and if we type anything here the button is still disabled and typing the same thing to a password repeat and here the button is enabled now our on change functions are nothing but a simple value assignment functions and instead of having this function we can do this assignment right here in line in this element so we can replace this on input assignment to something like this in double quotes and in curly braces we are going to define an arrow function here it is taking event and and in this function we will take the event target value and assign it to password and we will repeat the same thing for unchange password repeat so we will have event and we will be assigning the value from target value to password repeat now we don't need these functions and let's save this one and the tests are passing and if we type anything here when the values are matching the button is enabled and when the values are not matching the button is disabled Svelte is offering a shorter way to do this assignment now let's open developer tools in browser hitting f12 in chrome and just undocking this one now in console let's query the element we can query this element let's say we will have password input and we will get it by document query selector all we will be querying all inputs this is returning an array 
and we have four items in it and in this array we will get the third one which is the index 2. So this is password input and if we check the value of this input here it is saying a and let's say I type uh, one two three here and let's get the password input value here it is printing a one two three that's what I type here so that's how we can get a value from this input element now the Svelte is offering a shorter way to assign this value of this input to our local state variables and we can do it with the bind keyword so just removing this on input assignment here now instead of this one I'm typing bind colon and the value is in the value of this input and we will assign the value to our password field here and same thing also applies to this one we will bind value to password repeat so we are binding the value of this input to our state variables so whenever this is changing whenever we type anything here these variables are having the latest value and since they are changing since they are updated this reactive declaration is working and it is updating this disabled property now saving this one and the tests are passing and if we type anything here typing a and typing a to this password repeat here we are seeing the button is enabled so with this way our implementation is way shorter than our initial one so with less code we achieve the same result